Today on DC News Now, the fall feeling continues this afternoon, but we're tracking a warm up on the way. A school is back in session for kids at Frederick County Public Schools. What changes parents and students need to know this school year? Then cameras discovered in a DC gym locker room. What is the, you know, what is the exact need to be filmed? And who, and who is looking at this footage? Members weighing in on the new surveillance. Also, it's day three at the DNC in Chicago. We are Maryland! Don't miss all the highlights, plus who viewers can expect to see today. Cyberbullying protection coming up. Safety tips for parents and children as the new school year starts. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall, meteorologist Scott Sumner's in for Damon Matson today. And Scott, the Another nice day in the neighborhood. No complaints from me, my friend. Absolutely, Mark. Beautiful weather. Less of a breeze today. As a matter of fact, we started off quite cool out there this morning. Take a look at some of these numbers, Mark. We hit 59 degrees, 59 for morning low in D.C., and that was the coolest August temperature morning low in about 20 years. Look at this. Hagerstown coming in at 53, and Apples at 57, Leesburg at 51 degrees, and yes, there were some 40 here and I know it was in the mountains and higher elevation but still 40s in August is cool no matter how you slice it 46 degrees in Oakland 50 over in Culpeper so yes it was a bit of a chilly morning and can we have a repeat of that for tomorrow morning we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that but right now as you can see our live camera a beautiful look from our rooftop camera showing sunshine and 73 degrees right now and like I said just a moment ago less wind to deal with this afternoon and we'll top up uh, about upper 70s here here around 77 degrees around four o'clock before we see those temperatures start to slide back throughout the evening, uh, late afternoon, early evening into the 60s and middle 60s there by around that midnight hour. All right, what about our satellite radar? We're not looking at anything here. Our highways and byways are fine and dry. And again, sunglasses are needed today and will be needed for tomorrow as well. As there's no clouds to speak of here in our area, the closest ones are way out towards the west. So our forecast for the rest of the afternoon, I'll talk about that coming up. And of course, your seven day forecast right around the corner. Mark? All right, Scott. New at noon, we have learned the name of the man killed at Gold's Gym yesterday in Reston. His name is 31-year-old Hung Jun Koi. Koi was shot during his workout. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he died. The suspect fled police, but he was arrested last night. He's identified as Steve Teheiha, and people in the Reston community reacting to the shooting this morning kind of shook. I just moved to the area like four months ago, so um, I am all about safety and being around, you know, safe areas. And this is honestly the safest area I've seen and to have something like this happen in a gym. Um, I mean, I feel for the victim and their family and it's just, I'm shocked. Ha is charged with second degree murder and he's held on no bond. Police are still working to learn the motive behind the shooting. The gym remained closed today. Well, in Virginia, neighbors still in shock after police say a two-year-old grabbed his mother's boyfriend's gun, shot him, leaving him in critical condition. This happened in Chesterfield on Monday, and police say the man was getting ready to leave the house when the toddler grabbed his gun off the chair and accidentally shot him. One expert tells us that securing guns is the best way to prevent situations like this from happening. The minute that baby's born, if you have guns in the home, they need to be um, up and out of out of reach, locked, um, unloaded, have a gun lock on it, be in a gun safe or something like that. Well, Virginia law says it's illegal to have a loaded, unsecured firearm left around a child younger than 14. It's unclear if charges will be filed. In Maryland, police are investigating after a two-year-old was run over and killed by a streetcar. This happened around 8 last night in the Ocean City on the boardwalk near Dorchester Street. Officials say the boy died at the scene. Investigators say that both tram conductors stayed at the scene and are cooperating with police. Cameras in locker rooms, a decision causing controversy for a D.C. gym. The surveillance equipment spotted inside of Vita Fitness on U Street and Logan Circle. Now, the company claiming it's for increasing visibility for safety and security purposes, but some members raising concerns are threatening to cancel their memberships. 
felt that it's a total violation of our privacy. People walk around the locker room um, without clothing on all the time. Um, people are going to forget that those cameras are there. Logan Circle members say Vita told them yesterday that implementation of these cameras are being paused. DC News now reached out to Vita for comments so far. We've not heard back. In Maryland, hateful graffiti found at more schools. Montgomery County officials uh, say that they discovered uh, days before students are set to return to class. Schools Strathmore and Falls Med Elementary Schools, as well as Churchill and Wooten High Schools. Now, the vandalism including anti-Semitic and anti-LGBTQ messages. The Jewish Federation of Greater Washington says that the recurring vandalism at schools and places of worship are hurtful. People who decide to vandalize schools with hate-based graffiti know what they're doing. They want to make this as public of a statement as possible. County leaders are now working to find solutions, but say that they don't have enough officers to monitor every school around the clock. The county executive says that more aggressive surveillance techniques may be necessary. In Virginia, some good news for education. Standards of learning scores for last school year are out, showing that students are starting to recover from pandemic learning loss. According to state officials, 70% of Virginia school districts saw improvements in math and reading scores. They say that there were also slight improvements in third through eighth grade students who passed their reading and math exams. Governor Glenn Youngkin believes that his all-in initiative focusing on intense tutoring and class attendance is working. You saw much more in, in, in improvements in math versus reading. Uh, the reality is that uh, the reading foundational building blocks, if people don't have them, are hard to harder to recover from. It's more persistent. And the governor hopes a newly announced policy banning cell phones in schools will also help bring up test scores in the future. Uh, Montgomery County police increasing patrols near schools to keep students safe as they head back to school. They will focus on driving on, on drivers who speed and run red lights and also they did not stop for pedestrians. Now, police say that the increased presence will start Monday. It's the first day of class for Montgomery County Public Schools. In addition to more police officers, the department will also place more speed cameras in and around school zones. All MCPS school, uh, school buses are also equipped with cameras to catch and find drivers who legally pass stop school buses. Well, Prince George's County Public Schools is hosting a student orientation day on Friday. The event helps new and transitioning students feel comfortable in their new environment. Uh, more details on your school student orientation day can be found through the school calendar and directory. Well, it is the first day of school for kids in Frederick County Public Schools, and the district kicked off the new school year with some new changes. DC News now is toasting the Achilles at Oakdale High School, catching up with students and administrators. Frederick County Public Schools starting off the new school year with some growth. 49,000 students are expected to be enrolled this school year. That's up from last year where it was just under 48,000. We are at Oakdale High School and the students here came ready for the first day of school. I'm OK. I'm a little nervous, but I already know the teachers that I have this year. <laughs> If they weren't here, we wouldn't be here. So we're very excited to have them back in the building for the year. I'm mostly happy to be here and happy that I get to leave in like three hours. The start of the school year means the return of the alarm clock. I got up at 6 30 this morning. 6 a.m. on the dot. And for these seniors, this school year is about preparation. This year I'm taking sociology, which will also help me um, define how I um, work out there in, um, in life and in everything that I do. And as FCPS students make their way back to the classroom, new school year, new changes. First, the school district says there's an increase in class sizes by one. And so what that means is when you have one less teacher in a building, that class of students has to be distributed across other classrooms within that school. The school district's Board of Education will be discussing cell phone policies, but have put in additional guidelines. At the elementary school level, cell phones will be silenced and off during the school day. At the middle school level, students can use their cell phone for expressly approved instructional purposes. And for our high school students, they can use them on the bus, they can use them during class transitions, and then they can also use them for expressly approved instructional purposes during the school day. And this school year, FCPS will be opening a parent resource center focused on supporting families with special education needs. In Frederick County, I'm Tosin Fakile. Back to you.
Tosin, thank you. Social media food reviewer Keith Lee is here. The TikTok star arriving in the DMV and enjoying his first meal in Fairfax, Virginia. He ate at the Okanami Asian Grill on Fairfax Boulevard. Lee asked his more than 16 million followers to suggest mom and pop shops that have delicious food but may struggle to find customers. And he ordered a Hawaiian dish, dish, it's a chicken bowl, and lemongrass chicken bowl and a cucumber salad. And according to his family, the service was excellent. Lemongrass chicken bowl was his favorite dish, earning an 8.5 out of 10. All right, Beyonce has a new business venture. She's partnering with Maud Hennessy for her own whiskey brand, Sir Davis Whiskey. Now, the headquarters is in her hometown of Houston, and the spirit named after her great-grandfather known as a moonshine man during Prohibition. Beyonce captioning her announcement, Davis is my bones. Her whiskey line is expected to drop on her birthday. The suggested retail price, $89.